In this video, I would like to go very quickly through some of the jobs and responsibilities when working as a harness design engineer. So harness design, it's usually done by an external company. Most of the time, it's not done by the automotive manufacturer. So if you work for Volkswagen or Toyota or Tesla or Jaguar Land Rover, there are going to be external suppliers that manufacture the harness. And the car manufacturer, they have a contract with these companies and they also give them the whole harness design project and process. So they don't only give them the manufacturing capability, they give the whole package. So many times if you work in harness design, you might be working for one of those companies, those suppliers. So they might be hire you and you're going to learn in a short amount of time that there is a huge team that deals with the harness design and manufacturing so you're not going to be the only one responsible there is going to be a person that is going to be responsible for the harness and you might be that person and if you are going to be the responsible for the harness design and delivery you're going to have access to all the other people in the company and in the team that you need to engage them to also step in with uh, and put their responsibility on the design and the delivery of the harness so those companies, they usually have like an EDS management or a EDS project leader. And usually that person is the leader or the manager for the whole project. And the project is usually like a vehicle or a series of vehicles that have similar harnesses. And that person usually has everyone under his uh, responsibility. So the harness design jobs that you can have are around here. So you can be a cut designer, especially as a beginner in the harness design world you're usually going to be a cut designer so you're responsible for the cut design and you are going to work with an EDS designer or an EDS design engineer that is going to be responsible for the harness design and delivery so this person it's usually your colleague it's not your boss but because this person is responsible for the harness design and delivery you're basically going to respond in a way to it and you're going to be responsible for the cut design and you're going to be responsible to highlight all the CAD issues to this person. So this is the, your whole responsibility. If you learn what this person does, and usually this happens, so you have a lot of CAD designers that uh, they, des they become CAD and EDS. So this depends on the company. There are, comp there are companies out there that keep those two people apart from each other. So those are two jobs in that company. So they rarely come together in that company if they are uh, organized like that. But as a CAD designer, you can become better paid than an EDS designer just because you also know this person's job. So you're very efficient on doing your uh, CAD work because the company will also use the EDS designer for other projects or they can just use them to work with uh, less experienced CAD designers, newcomers in the company and they're going to make you work with uh, less experienced EDS uh, designers because this is not easy to learn and I'm going to try to explain here uh, a few of those and there are companies and I worked like uh, in a company like that that they have the EDS and CAD designer in the same person so they give you a harness you're responsible for it until the end and one of the things that uh, you're not responsible usually is the circuit design so the circuit diagram will not be designed by a CAD designer this is usually a separate circuit design team and they deal with pinouts and everything they put that in a software and you just have to check that software to know what wires you're going to add in your bundles and uh, so on so responsible for the circuit uh, diagram design and those guys are usually a small team and uh, they deal with the circuits that uh, all the companies have so there might be several teams with CAD design EDS design and all those guys around here but just the same team working with all the other teams so that's why they are uh, organized like that because circuit is simple it's just uh, diagrams and pinouts and the uh, list and stand tables so you don't have any 3d design you don't have uh, stuff that uh, takes a lot of time to do it's pretty straightforward and uh, it's the same for a uh, complexity engineering you might have one guy that deals with the complexity on all the projects so that guy will uh, work with uh, everyone and if you on some companies if you work like for example i was working in a ferrari formula one and I was doing all of those jobs in one person because they don't have a process. They need one person to act and work very, very fast 
because the projects in Formula 1 they take very very small uh, short amount of times. So the EDS designer is the one responsible to deliver all the information needed for the harness manufacturing plant. Of course there is also the circuit design team that they are going to send their stuff to the harness manufacturing plant. But that's straightforward, that's just a software, it's just a list of uh, pinouts and stuff. And they are going to compare that with your stuff. So this is uh, what's going to happen here. And above all those people that uh, do the work, they do the whole work, there are other tools that uh, you can use. And uh, I like to express it like that. Because usually in good companies, in uh, successful companies, you get a lot of help from uh, above if uh, you're actually doing your job. So you're going to have a senior designer. So it's a senior EDS designer that is going to sit with uh, you. He might work next to you, he's going to sit there with the team and he's going to deal with uh, some other stuff that uh, it's needed inside the team. So you're going to see that, you're going to slowly start to learn what he's doing and how he can help you. Then you have the DVP and the DFMA team, design verification process team. Usually there is a department and they have a DFMA engineer, DVP engineer or they have the same person that does DVP and DFMA. And in many companies that they have an EDS engineer, the EDS en engineer is going to be responsible for the DFMA for that harness. So the file is going to be there on the network, but they are responsible that uh, the issues that need to be inserted in that DFMA file, they are inserted there. But it's also going to be the DFMA team that uh, they are going to sit down with the EDS designer and the CAD designer and they are going to make sure that uh, the stuff is uh, recorded accordingly in the DFMA because it's a legal document, it's an important document and it has to be done correctly by standards. And design verification process, there are basically meetings where you sit down and uh, you verify the design with uh, a senior design engineer, EDS team leader, CAD manager if uh, that's needed. A CAD manager, usually it's a single person in a company that is the manager of all the CAD designers. And uh, if you, when you do an interview, the interview might be with the EDS management and the CAD designer, or there are going to be two separate interviews. You are going to have one with the EDS management or human resources. It depends on the company. If you're a contractor, it's a uh, Human resources do not get involved in contracting, but if you're going to be uh, employed by the company, you're going to deal also with human resources, but you're also going to go at the CAD manager and he's going to test you if you know how to work in CAD and so on. And that's going to be one of your like bosses, but it's it can be helpful, it can be a helpful person. And of course your boss, which is going to be the EDS team leader, which again, it's a guy that is there to help you and support you to do your job. And usually it's a guy that is going to sit there at the same desk that uh, you do or uh, somewhere in that area. So this is the whole team. This is this might be your whole team that you're working in, your whole company, your whole colleagues. You might go out or you might go at the company's party and uh, these people are all going to be there or some of them. But this, of course, depends on the company or uh, how big they are, who are they working for. And from a project point of view, from a harness design project's point of view, Everyone here uh, eventually will have to fulfill the directions of the vehicle manufacturing department, which is a department inside the automotive uh, manufacturing company. So if you work for Volkswagen, Volkswagen, they are going to have a vehicle manufacturing department and they are going to take a look at uh, what you design, harness, retainers, everything. And they are going to do simulations when you ask them and say if uh, there is a problem with the mounting of your harness or something needs to be changed. They also have a lot of experience so they can tell you in advance before you get to do the actual thing in reality. And when it gets to the assembly line, if there is a problem, they will come back uh, and challenge your design. So those guys basically are responsible for the integration of the project, of the 3D projects in the manufacturing assembly plans. And after that it's finished, there is the production team that uh, takes over to deliver the vehicles to the clients and everyone here goes to a next project. So this is like an overview of uh, the jobs and responsibilities you might have. You only need to remember that it might be slightly different from uh, one company to another. So those teams might be way bigger than what you see here on the screen and they or they might be a little smaller. But it's good to know what uh, you should ask so you can quickly realize what is the process in uh, that company. So I hope you enjoyed this and see you in the next video.